Hey everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a homemade equation. Yes, I did come up with this idea, but anyone can come up with something like this. Obviously, no big deal. We have z to the power 4n plus 3 equals negative z. n is an integer. So we're going to be solving for z values. So we have a number when we raise it to an integer power in the form of 4n plus 3, which means a number that leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by 4 or 3 mod 4. And we get the opposite of our number. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the general solution. And then I'm going to be showing you some specific cases, which I think is pretty interesting. And then we're going to look at what Wolfram Alpha gives us for solutions. And when you see them, I think you'll be pretty surprised. All right, so wait for the end. We have z to the power 4n plus 3 equals negative z. Again, n is an integer. So to be able to solve this problem, we could probably do many other things besides using the polar form. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to replace z with r times e to the i theta. Wait a minute. The name of this channel is a plus bi. So why don't we use a plus bi for z? You could. I mean, you could replace it, but raising a plus bi to the power 4n plus 3 would be pretty hard. So using exponents here would be very, very helpful. So yes, you can use a plus bi, but at some point, I think you need to use the polar form. And another thing you can do here is dividing both sides by z. Obviously, that's going to help you too, and we can take a look at it as well. Anyways, let's start with this. z equals r times e to the i theta. Remember, this is how you can write complex numbers using Euler's formula. This is the most compact form. r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is called the argument, okay? Which you can call arg z. And that is basically the angle between negative uh, pi and pi that the angle makes. Well, I'm talking about the principal value. But anyways, you get the idea when you graph z, something like this, this angle is called theta. Okay, this is the imaginary axis. This is the real axis. But we don't know what our number looks like. This is just generic. Now, let's go ahead and plug this in. So when we replace z with that, we're going to raise it to the power 4n plus 3, and then we're going to negate it. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to write a negative sign here because I'm going to use natural log, and negative r does not behave well with uh, negative numbers, the real natural log. So I want to have a positive number there, and if r is 0, you're probably going to realize if, if r is 0, z is going to be 0, and 0 will satisfy this equation, right? So we're not going to really discuss the trivial cases, but just know that z equals 0 works. So if z does not equal 0, what happens? Well, first of all, I want to get rid of the negative. So can I do the following? If you have a number like this, let's say this is our z, how do you find the opposite of z? Well, it's easy. You just extend it in the opposite direction. And guess what it does? It adds pi to the argument. So now your argument is pi plus theta. Make sense? So instead of theta, we're going to use pi plus theta here. Great. Let's go ahead and do it. That way we're going to be able to keep the positive r, but this time we're going to have i times pi plus theta. Make sense? Obviously r is not going to change because the absolute value is always the same, if, even if you extend it or rotate it 180 degrees. Same thing, right? Great. Now, and of course, uh, rotating 180 degrees can be uh, considered multiplying by negative 1, because negative 1 can be written as e to the power pi i, and when you multiply by this, you're going to be adding pi to the argument. Does that make sense? I hope it does. You could also proceed that way. Anyways, so now we pretty much have everything we need. Let's go ahead and raise r to the power 4n plus 3. Remember, n is an integer, so r to the power 4n plus 3 is a real number, 
And then here we're going to have e to the power i theta multiplied by 4n plus 3. And on the right hand side, we're going to have r times, so there's a multiplication sign here, e to the power i times pi plus theta, or theta plus pi. Okay? Now, comparing these two numbers, they are equal to each other. So their arguments are supposed to be equal to each other and their moduli. Modulus moduli. Don't you like that? So we're going to set the absolute values equal to each other. r to the power 4n plus 3 equals r. As you know, r can be 0, but we already talked about it. What if r does not equal 0? Then we're going to have four to r to the power 4n plus 2 equals 1. And then from here, hopefully, you get r equals 1. But you could also get r equals negative 1, right? Well, wait a minute. r is the absolute value. It's a real number that cannot be negative. So r equals 1 is the only answer. That's kind of nice because now we got rid of the r's. So we ended up with e to the power something. So let's go ahead and write that down again. Uh, e to the power i theta multiplied by 4n plus 3. Remember, we had raised it to that power. And then e to the power i times pi plus theta. Of course, when you set these equal to each other, i is going to cancel out, e is going to cancel out, and then we're going to have the following. Theta times 4n plus 3 equals pi plus theta. How do you solve for theta? Our goal is to find theta because we found r. r equals equal to 1. And if you can find theta, we can write z because, remember, we were trying to solve for z, and z is r e to the i theta, right? So that's what we're looking for. So from here, I can isolate theta, but bring the other theta here. That's going to bring one, uh, that's going to subtract one theta, so it's going to make it 4n plus 2 equals pi. And finally, theta can be written as pi over 4n plus 2. Notice that 4n plus 2 is an even number, but not just any even number, an even number that is not a multiple of 4, because it leaves a remainder of 2. In other words, this is 2 mod 4. Make sense? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at some specific cases because the solutions are going to be fun. Okay, so let's see what happens with different values. Remember, r is equal to 1 all the time. Awesome. Now, if n is equal to 0, you're not going to get theta equals 0. You're going to get theta equals pi over 2. Awesome. And then since r is 1, our number z can be written as e to the i theta. So it's going to be z equals e to the i times pi over 2. But that's just i, right? Imaginary unit. Why? Because if you think about it, pi over 2 is the argument for i, right? Great. So one of the solutions is i, and we can plug it in and actually check it. How? i to the power 4n plus 3, if n is an integer, can be written as i to the 4n times i cubed. As you know, i to the fourth power is always 1. This is i cubed, and i cubed is negative i, which is the opposite of i. Make sense? So, yes, i satisfies this equation. That's just one of the infinitely many solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at n equals 1, because this is fun. If n is equal to 1, then theta is going to be pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, and our z is going to be e to the power i times pi over 6, which can be written as root 3 over 2 plus 1 half multiplied by i. And if you check this out, raise it to the power 4n plus 3, but remember n is 1, so it's going to be this number to the seventh power, right? 4n plus 3, n is 1. And then you're going to get the opposite of this number. And think about why the seventh power will be the opposite. You'll find it easily. Remember, we talked about dividing both sides. Anyways, n equals 2 is going to give us something more interesting because this time theta is going to be pi over 10, which is kind of like a semi-special angle. z is going to be e to the power i pi over 10, or I can write it as what? Cosine pi over 10, because I don't know the value by heart. Cosine 18, you, you probably memorize it, right? If you do, please let me know. And this is sine pi over 10. And is it going to work? It should, right? Go ahead and test it out. But in general, z can be written as e to the power i pi over 4n plus 2, where n is an integer. I didn't check the negative integers, but hopefully they are going to work. Okay, this doesn't bring us to the end because we still have to look at what Wolfram Alpha has to offer. And Wolfram Alpha gave me these real solutions like, what are you talking about? I don't know what this means because n is an integer. It says z is zero. Okay, fine, forget about it. 
z equals negative 1. Wait a minute, I didn't test it. Does negative 1 work? Well, the negative 1 to an odd power is not going to be 1. So too bad it's not going to work. Too bad well, from alpha, you failed. And if you and if you look at the solution for the variable z, this is what I got. Sorry, it's kind of blurry because where Wolfram Alpha gives us the solution as a picture, an image. That's why I can't magnify it. Maybe there's a way to do it. I tried, but I couldn't do it. Please let me know if you do. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.